So last year, I made a video covering the top 47 most frequently asked questions on Tesla's Powerwall 3. And the video seemed to do really well at covering all of the basics, but after spending hundreds of hours over the past year talking to homeowners just like you, I've realized it doesn't answer everything. So let's expand on this and dive into five of the most popular questions that I still get asked every single week. Question one, Powerwall 3 versus expansion packs. So first things first, we have Powerwall 3s and we have expansion packs. When do you need more Powerwall units? And when can you just add expansion packs? Now, no matter what, your very first battery on your system is always gonna be a Powerwall. That's a non-negotiable because you need an inverter for your system. The core difference between the two, it's not about capacity. Both the Powerwall and the expansion pack store the same 13 and a half kilowatt hours. The difference is power output, the inverter. Powerwall has an 11 and a half kilowatt inverter. The expansion pack has no inverter. Think of it like this, I'll use a car analogy. The expansion pack, it's like adding a second gas tank to your car. By doing this, we can drive further, but we can't drive faster. We're not adding more power, just more fuel. Whereas with an additional power wall, it will increase both your car's top speed and let you drive further since we're adding more power and more fuel. Now, the two key scenarios where you should consider a second power wall over an expansion pack is when you need that additional inverter power for either larger solar systems, typically between 16 and 20 kilowatts, or if you have larger electrical loads that need to be backed up in the home. Now, here's the reality. Most homes, they only need the power output, KW, of one power wall three. They don't need to drive faster, they just need to drive further. And that 11.5 kilowatts of continuous power, it's enough to probably back up nine out of 10 single family homes. So when you want your battery to last longer throughout the night and during peak hours, which is most people's goal, you just need more capacity or more fuel in the tank. You don't need to go faster. This is really where expansion packs shine. They're easier to install and they're a bit more cost effective because you're not having to upsize wire, add breakers, and you're not including that unnecessary additional inverter that comes inside of a regular power wall. So short version of all of this, if you need more power and battery runtime, Powerwall 3 is the right pick. If you just want more runtime from your battery system, expansion packs are the right pick. And if it's your first time here on the channel, my name is Zach. I've been in the industry for 10 years and I work directly with a Tesla Premier installer here in Arizona. If you have any questions that we don't cover in this video, drop them below in the comments. All right, the second question I get a bunch is Tesla backup switch versus the Gateway 3. What's the difference and which one should I go with? And if you're wondering, well, what is a backup switch and what is a Gateway? That's the first thing we need to cover, so let's start there. The Tesla Gateway and Tesla Backup Switch are two different components, but you only need one within your system. They both serve two primary functions. One, act as the transfer switch and isolate the home from the grid in the event of a power outage. And then two, provide communications for the Powerwall system. We basically summarize these components to be the brain of the system. They're gonna sense a power outage and then flip your home off grid within milliseconds. Using the gateway is and has been the standard process of installing the Powerwall system, but if we are able to use this backup switch, that can introduce some benefits. The main advantages of the backup switch are smaller form factor, easier installation, and lower overall cost. Your installer, they can essentially use your home's existing electrical system as is and back up every circuit within your main panel. It's a true whole home backup. Now, if we go with the standard gateway route, this is traditionally gonna require a bit more electrical work, circuit relocation, and a larger equipment footprint. But it will offer a little more flexibility since you can select which circuits you want backed up. Now you may think, well, if the backup switch offers a simpler installation, why not use it every single time? First, since it's a piece of equipment that goes behind your utility meter, not all utilities have approved of the backup switch. I will include a link below in the description with a list of approved utilities directly from Tesla. So if you have no utility approval, then you have to use the Gateway 3, which is completely fine. Also, your electrical situation matters. Not every single home is gonna be a good fit for the backup switch, especially if your home's main electrical service exceeds 200 amps. If you have a 400 amp service, the backup switch cannot be used since it's designed for whole home backup and has a 200 amp max. System performance, it's gonna be identical either way, whether you go with gateway three or backup switch, but you can think of this like taking the freeway versus the city streets to get to your destination. It's the same destination, same outcome at the end of the day, 
but the route to get there, it's just gonna be a little bit different. If you are in the market for a solar and a battery system for your home and you'd like to book a discovery call with me, you can use the link in the description below. It's completely free, zero pressure, and takes just 15 minutes. If you're not in my service area and I can't assist, I'll let you know beforehand so that I don't waste your time. The third question I get a bunch, indoor versus outdoor installation, which option is preferred for Powerwall? Now, the biggest variable to this question is, what is your existing setup like? Where do you have space for your batteries and how far are these locations away from your electrical panel. The further away your desired battery location is from the electrical panel, the less feasible and more expensive the project becomes. I've found that the typical preference for homeowners is installing the battery inside the garage. It keeps the battery shaded, out of the elements, hidden from your neighbor's view, and it usually gives your installer plenty of open wall space to mount the necessary equipment. Plus, if you have a really strict HOA, this will likely be their preference as well. Now, you might really want them installed inside the garage, but if your electrical panel is on the opposite side of the home, like mine is, it may still be doable, but it will require more wire, conduit, and labor, which can increase the cost of your project. With that being said, outdoor installs are also completely fine. The Powerwall 3 is outdoor rated with a temperature range of up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and a common follow-up question I get here is, what happens when it exceeds that temperature, especially here in Arizona? The battery isn't going to shut down. What happens is the system will derate or throttle itself, kind of like a computer or a phone that gets too hot and starts working a little slower. So the Powerwall might have a slower charge or discharge rate on those really hot days above this threshold. If you are going to go with an exterior install, here are the top options, north facing walls, anywhere with good shading throughout the day and then east facing walls. These are gonna be your best options. Why east facing? Even if it gets sun, it's earlier in the day when ambient temperatures are cooler so that direct sunlight doesn't have as big of an impact. West facing and south facing walls can work as well if needed, but you are getting that direct sunlight during the hottest part of the day, typically in the afternoon. So that combination of higher temps plus direct sunlight drive up the battery temperature faster. But again, the first priority here is available space, feasibility of installation, and what local code and permitting will allow. Your preference matters, of course, but some battery installs can require a lot of equipment that might not be able to be installed where you'd like them. For our fourth question, how many years will the battery actually last? Now, this question can come with a bit of speculation since it can vary, but what I can share with you is what I've learned from Tesla and other manufacturers in general. Tesla's warranty is 10 years with unlimited cycles and a 70% energy retention guarantee. And I don't think Tesla's 10 year warranty means they lack confidence in the product that it can't last longer. I just think they haven't had a reason to extend the length. They've stuck with 10 years across Powerwall, Powerwall 2, and now Powerwall 3, and given they're offering a better product statistically than most of today's options at a better price point, they really don't have a competitive reason to push it to 15 years just yet. What I can tell you is the degradation data on late Powerwall 2s and now Powerwall 3s show very negligible capacity loss over time, especially with their update in chemistry. Now, I know Powerwall 3 is a new product, so the sample size is still pretty small. In the description below, I will include an interesting analysis from Net Zero on Powerwall energy retention over time. For some additional context, my two Powerwall 2s were installed three years ago and they have seen less than 4% in degradation, which it's about one kilowatt hour total, and I work them pretty hard each day. And the Powerwall 3 upgraded its chemistry to LFP, lithium iron phosphate, which it's just a more durable, safer, and longer lasting chemistry than the older NMC that I have on my batteries. So, Based on all of this, I think 15 plus years, it's very realistic for any installer grade battery that's being installed today. But again, that's all speculation on my opinion based on the data that I've seen. Could it fail sooner? Sure, things fail within warranty all the time. Could it last longer? Absolutely. Quality of manufacturing, R&D, and manufacturer failure rates all matter. You can have the best product with the longest warranty, but if it has a high failure rate or the company goes out of business, a lot of this becomes irrelevant. So my short answer, I think 15 plus years is reasonable based on normal cycling and the data that we're seeing with these premium LFP batteries. And for question number five, can you add a Powerwall 3 to an existing solar system? So maybe you're watching this and you already have solar panels on your roof and you're curious about adding a Powerwall to your setup or maybe you're considering solar and starting there and then adding batteries down the road. 
The answer to this is absolutely. It's very doable to integrate a Powerwall 3 with your solar panels and your solar inverter system with either the gateway or the backup switch. We call this AC coupling, pairing the battery with an AC power source, alternating current, which is your existing solar inverter. You can also replace your existing solar inverter if it's older, you're worried about it failing, and you just want to upgrade to Tesla's all-in-one design. In that case, you'd restring the panels to use Tesla's integrated inverter that's inside the Powerwall 3. This would be DC coupling, where you have the battery directly paired to the DC power of the solar panels. Now, Every situation is a bit unique, but it does come down to what your existing inverter is and what size it is. And that's the one limitation with retrofit installs with Powerwall 3 when pairing it to a third party inverter. A single Powerwall, it can only handle a maximum of 7.6 kilowatts AC, and that's your inverter size. So if your inverter is at or under 7.6 kilowatts, you're fine with one power wall. And since most of you, you probably don't know what your solar inverter size is offhand, just look at your solar breaker inside your main panel. If it's at or under 40 amps, you're all clear for one power wall. If you're above this threshold, you'll need either one power wall and an expansion pack, two power walls, or We'll have to replace your existing inverter, restring the system, and use Tesla's integrated solar inverter. So you still have options, it just becomes a bit more complicated. And there you have it. After hundreds of hours of talking about Powerwall 3, these are just five of the most common questions that I get asked. And if I didn't answer the questions that you might have about this battery, drop them below in the comments and I'll help answer them. If you found this video helpful, do me a huge favor and drop a like. It really does help the channel grow. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.